the first module that we are going to work with uh, is our Adobe Animate CC. Um, like I gave you the introduction in the first class, um, I will not only cover AS level in, in the first year, we will also do uh, P4. The reason why is obviously I want to save more time for our A2. And that's the way it should go in IT. Well, what is Animate? Well, Animate, obviously by its name, you know, it, it's, it means to create all animations. These animations are not just um, desktop-based presentations, advertisements, they're also web-based. If you have some idea about HTML web-based, you know that HTML5 is the latest one that you have. You might have heard of WordPress. Um, commonly now WordPress is used. So <clears throat> what happened was um, I've been working with Flash for the past two decades now. When, when the Flash first version came in, in 2000, uh, I did use even that one. So it came on from all the versions. There have been like around seven to eight versions that have changed. First, it was Flash. In between, what happened was that Flash um, had some issue because Flash was Flash standalone player was not supported by iPhone. When iPhone came in, in its first version, it was not able to support Flash. Now, the problem was there were lots of iPhone users. Uh, smartphone became more common. Or basically, it came common because of iPhone. You know that. So um, around 2010 and 11, there was a big, big setback for Adobe Animate. Uh, Adobe Flash, I would say, the, the previous version. Uh, but obviously, uh, very soon, in a few months, they were able to cope up with this problem. Okay, um, you should obviously know all this. Okay, so basically, the reason why we are using Flash is for any sort of animation that we have to create, desktop-based, web-based. Web uh, Xamarin will tell us. So, what do we have to do? I'll just tell you. <clears throat> now, okay. First of all, have you? Um, I'm sure no. Installed Animate? Did you download it? The link I sent you, all of you. Yes, sir. Very good. Were you able to install it? Yes, sir. Very good. Okay, great. Who was this? Uh, Liber Sultan. Liber Sultan. And better uh, rest of you. I I want you to be more. Um, <clears throat> listen, you need to participate more in the class. You need to ask more questions. It's your right. Let's have <clears throat> mannerism etiquettes. You can ask ask me as many questions, but obviously. And we, all of us, we have to remain within limits. You can ask me 10 times. Don't sit back. Sir Simpson, I will ask him such an easy question. What would others feel? Forget about that. At the end of the day, you have to get your grades. At the end of the day, you will be the one going to university. Okay? Maybe you will not meet each other. I'm not asking you to be selfish. But the point is that just think about yourself right now. You have to get good grades. There's a lot of competition out there. Um, so obviously, you have to end up with good grades. So don't care about what people think about anything. Uh, it's not opening. OK, OK, you can't speak. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, OK, but one second. Uh, If you can hear me better, you can simply um, send me a screenshot where you're having an error. Okay, send me a screenshot in the group and I'll guide you how it will work. So don't worry about that. But just let me know where the problem is because I, I can't tell where the problem is. So if you tell me, I'll guide you. Uh, when you have to install this, uh, there, there's a video over there. If you open the video, just go through it. You have to turn off your internet and then you have to install it. Okay, so if you turn if your internet is on and then you install it, it will not work. So you have to uninstall it, uninstall it, turn off your internet and reinstall it. It will work. Okay, because we are reusing a pirated version. You know, we are a rich country, right? You know, Adobe Animate is a very expensive software. You're paying like seven hundred and twenty dollars for the software, but we are using it for free. Isn't that great? But I mean, come on, we have to do it. Even the British Council in Pakistan are using pirated softwares. So. Uh, Laib Amir, was I able to answer your question, right? Yeah, you try it and you let me know. Okay, so we are going to start this now. The first thing that you will do is, uh, I will ask you again, all of you, can you see my screen so that I can continue with the first lecture today? Okay, now I'm talking to myself. 
Can all of you hear me? Yes, sir. And you can see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, okay, all yes. of you can. Now, <clears throat> there are lots of options over here. I'm not discussing them, all of them right now. I just want to start with it. We will discuss this afterwards, but it's not in our syllabus. We will just be dealing with action scripting three. That's all. Okay. So when once you open this, you just click on action scripting three. What do you have? Okay. Let's get acquainted with some of the things over here. Well, we call this the stage. It's the stage where your characters, where your object, where your text will be animating. Down here is your, uh, is, is your timeline. You can take it up. You can take it down wherever you want it to. Okay. Your timeline basically has different layers. If you can follow my cursor, you can see is I can add a new layer. I can name my layers, whatever may I want to. Okay. I'll add over here is object one. Okay. I can name this as object two, so on and so, so it's, it's obviously a very professional way to name your layers in every layer. You can see over here. Uh, these are known as frames. This entire thing is your timeline. Your timeline basically goes. Okay, that's your timeline. That's entire your timeline. So these are your frames. That's your fifth frame. That's your tenth frame. That's your fifteenth frame. That's your twentieth frame. Down over here, it's too small, but uh, I, I can use. The, okay, I can show you over here. Right now, I'm working at 24 frames per second. This means if I, if I play this movie, this will go at 24 frames in one second. I can change this. In the previous versions of Flash, there used to be 12 frames per second. But obviously, since the resolution is increasing more and more, it's becoming HD, they have doubled it. Now it's 24. You can even make it 36. You can make it whatever you want. You can make it. But obviously, the more frames you have, the more heavy your animation will be. It's a simple concept. It's just like pixels. So the default is 24 and CIE will, will leave it with 24. Okay. If they mention, yes, we can change it. This is the size of our canvas. You can change it. It's in, it's in pixels. It's 550 pixels wide. It's 400 pixels height wise. This is the dimension of my canvas. First of all, you can change the color of your canvas whatever you may want to, whatever color that you may want, you can change it. Okay. I'll leave it as white for today. I won't change it. Right. So down over here, if I can use the magnifier because we don't have a projector over here and not in the class or lab right now. So I can just show you this is that if you see over here, I have the timeline, it's zero seconds, it's 24 FPS and I am where one I'm on the first frame. Okay. Why am I talking about this? Let's do our first animation today. Let's do our first animation. What I'll do something is that <clears throat> I'll just get rid of one of the layer because I don't need that. Uh, I just need one layer. So here are my tools. You want your tools. You go to window. You can enable your tools. You want the properties. These are the properties. You don't want the properties. You can get rid of the properties. Okay. Properties of the canvas and all that. Uh, <clears throat> that's your timeline. <clears throat> you obviously want the timeline and so on and so so this is a gradual process <clears throat> i cannot introduce you with everything slowly by slowly you will learn it yourself it's such an easy tool frankly it's not tough but it's a very widely widely used tool animation frankly it's such a generic thing that anyone who goes into engineering as well they have to do it <clears throat> one of my cousin he's basically a chemical engineer who designs pipelines and all that in saudi arabia he came here and then he said, Simon, I want to learn this software. Can you teach me? And I, and I gave him my tutorials. Why? Because your 2D animations, all the engineers, everyone, anyone who just wants to make a 2D animation, demonstrate something within a presentation, how would you do it? You don't have a tool for that. Yes, you have this tool. So wherever you need to demonstrate something in 2D animation, just to describe how uh, probably any, any apparatus will work or any, 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 any concept, any diagram, whatever. Yes, you can use this. This is why this, this software is, is very important for all the professions. It's not just for animators. It's not just for those people. Okay. It's for everyone, frankly speaking. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the first thing we'll do is we will just, I will, uh, pick up a circle from here an oval shape. I'll just draw it here. I will use the move tool 
and let me say I will come here at 40. Now, since the lecture is being recorded and I'll share it with you as well, so I don't have to repeat again, but I'll still do it. I will come here and I will right click and I would say insert keyframe. By inserting keyframe, what I mean, because I have to tell my timeline that I want my object to start from one and I want my object to go till this frame. Then I can add another layer. Then I want another object to come. You might have seen different um, animated advertisements appearing um, <clears throat> on um, Facebook, on, on parkwheels.com, lots and lots of other things. Have you ever thought how do they make these animated advertisements and all that? That's they, they use Flash for that. You can convert it into a GIF. You can convert into PNG, whatever you want to. It's really interesting. Okay, so um, I, I'll press Control Z again. So I came here, I did insert keyframe. Now, one thing very important to all of you. You have to remember this that you have to do is you right click. Now you'll see uh, you have one black dot at the end and you have one black dot in the beginning. You just have to right click here and say uh, create classic twin. Right click here again and create classic twin. Uh, I will be telling you afterwards that I have, why have I done this? Okay, just remember once that you have to create classic ten twice. Now we're almost done. Why? If I press enter, my timeline is moving, but my object is not moving because I did not do anything with my object. So what I can do is in the beginning, my object is here. At the end, my object is here. All I do is I click in the last dot, the black dot. I click drag and drop. I click drag and drop. I'll press enter. My object is moving. Press enter, my object is moving. Okay, the, now the interesting part. Um, I press control enter. Once I press control enter, you will see is a standalone file generated. This is what I was talking about. This is what made Flash so famous, animate. You have your own standalone player that can be embedded in websites that can be installed, used as an app in phones. So it can be used everywhere. This standalone player was a problem in 2010 when iPhone came in and created a problem for Flash. iPhone somehow did not recognize their extension and people liked iPhone. So anyone visiting any website that used Flash was not appearing. So that time there was, there was a problem. So obviously then they were able to deal with it within a few months. So now what the point is, I've done this. Let's save this file. If I save this file, let me save it on the desktop. Okay. And I will just save it as, let's say, um, first, first animation, right? I'll save it. Now, the interesting part over here is you can see over here, over here. Uh, let me just drag it over here. This file is saved as an FLF file. FLF file is your flash extension file. FLF file is the file that you will edit. So whenever you want to edit your file, you want to add something to it, you will use the FLF file. Are all of you with me? Yes. Good. Now the interesting thing is that if I press control enter, I get my SW file. I call this, this not, I don't call this, everyone calls this the standalone player. What you will see now here is I where is my first animation? Didn't I get it over here? Ah, here it is. Should have put in a folder actually. So I got this as duplicate file. Now the advantage is if I open this without opening flash, I don't have to open flash. It's directly opening over here. Not only that, not only that, there's something more interesting about this. I can export this. I'll come to publish settings. No, I don't have to publish settings. I'll, 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 Get that we'll talk about this later on i'll just export it i'll go to publish and let's just say publish okay fine let's see what has happened i have a third file generated this third file is my web-based file now if i open this up in let's say google chrome or whatever oh i did not enable it 
allow. Let me open it up in is not enabled. Allow. Right. So this has been embedded. This has been embedded where? In our uh, browsers as well. It's an application in the browser as well. So you can upload this as a standalone player. You can upload this within websites. In fact, you can even do is you can even export this as a movie, which will be in a GIF. You have some idea about GIF files, anyone? What are GIF files? If you've studied this before, what is JPG? What is GIF? Can anyone answer me that? <clears throat> anyone? You have an idea? GIFs are a series of pictures put together. Bilkul say. Bilkul say. Very well done. Bilkul say. Absolutely correct. GIF. Uh, has a series of pictures exactly so if I if I export this as a GIF this will be exported as a GIF actually and I can embed it anywhere I want to look uh, JPG <clears throat> now now let's just talk about this you know um, along with this we will we will start with um, uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, frankly speaking uh, it is it is pronounced as uh, Adobe but I don't like calling it Adobe it sounds very weird so basically it's Adobe, that's what they call it, but uh, I like calling it Adobe. We'll do Adobe Photoshop, we'll do Adobe Illustrator and Flash. We'll do these three modules side by side. Right now I'm concentrating on Flash. The reason why we have to do Photoshop is because Photoshop will be integrated with Flash. In P4, the first question that you get is of graphics, which is Photoshop or Illustrator. The second question that you get is of animation. And the good part is, if you combine both of them, this is 50% of the paper. Yeah, P4, 50% of the paper is based on this. So they're, they're really important. And frankly speaking, they're really red. They're obviously, if you have an interest, you'll find them very easy. If you don't find interest in it, then you'll find them a bit tough. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously, this is why I've started with these two modules. They have a lot of weightage. Animation question. Um, comes around um, minimum 50, 15 marks, minimum. Uh, average 25 marks goes up till even 40 marks question. So that's why animation is an important module. The same way sound and video editing in P2 is an important module because sound and video editing is again of around 40 marks. Then you have programming. Programming is in JavaScripting. That's of less marks, it's of like, a to 10 marks that's in P4 but learning programming is important okay you should have a basic idea of programming whatever you do you want to go into animation whatever you should have an idea but this is the good thing that they have added programming in a level IT as well it's something really good and you will enjoy JavaScript it's not very complicated okay so this is the first animation that we just created I will add another one for you I will add a new layer I will I will obviously add my layers. Uh, I'm sorry, name my layers. I'll name this as object three. And in this case, we would add is a square. We could even change the color of these. I can just simply click on this. And I can change the color of this to whatever. So that, let's make it red. Now, frankly speaking, um, <clears throat> color schemes are, are, are really important. Um, anyone of you takes media studies in this class right now? I I take media studies as well. Okay, you do you you're doing media studies, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, any any one of you who's taking uh, computer science as well in this class? Anyone? Because uh, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. No one, I right? Computer science with IT. Who? Uh, we cannot take computer science with IT. Very good. Glad you know it. Who, 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 was, who was talking this? Who was saying this? 
Samia. Very good. Excellent. Um, so you know it. Let, let me let me tell everyone. Okay. Uh, because there was a rare case in our previous previous session. Uh, <clears throat> you cannot take IT and CS because Cambridge considers IT and CS of the same level. Same credit hours is the same subject. The only difference is they have distinguished it in such a way that if you want to study theory, if you want to study the architecture, uh, how the com uh, computer works, you do CS. If you want to learn, if you want to learn how the applications work, you because you are the application user, you learn IT. So, like I told you in the first lecture, there, uh, frankly speaking, uh, there are more application users in the world than developers. Frankly speaking, I mean, I told you that day there would be, there would be just two three people who will be developing in an organization, but there will be uh, hundreds of people who will be using it. Animators, graphics, uh, databases, programmers, they're, they're all people who use it. So all the modules that you have in IT are all the applications that we will learn, okay, till the advanced level. So <clears throat> any one of you ever, ever know someone, just tell that person, don't waste your time, don't take both subjects, it's the same thing. So I just added this, should I do it again? It's fine. I just added a new layer and I added this object, right? Then I will come here again at the at the end, and I will say over here is insert keyframe. Why insert keyframe? Because I just want this to <clears throat> um, perform till over here. If I wanted to perform till over here, I would have done insert keyframe over here. If I wanted one till here, I'll do it till over here. So the third step is that I have to do is create classic twin <clears throat> and create classic twin. So now what I can do is, now since uh, I'm here, I can simply drag it over here, that's it. Now if, if, I, if I press control enter, my two objects are moving. A very basic, simple first lecture animation that we've done over here. Now, since I've saved this file, I have the, S, I have the FLF file on my desktop and I have my SW file there. So if, if I go back, obviously this file has both of them. I just have to save it once. Every time I press control enter, every time I press control enter, this will be executed in my standalone file and it will, it will go over there. Right? One important thing will be that in your, in your IT paper, you always have to save your files in a folder. Make it a habit. <clears throat> Whatever you have, task one, make a separate folder. Task two, make a separate folder. You always have to make folders. Okay? <clears throat> so, um, without folders, don't do it. Okay. Till here, is it clear? Can I discuss the next step today? Is it clear till here, beta, all of you? Okay. Yes, beta? What is the meaning of classic twin? <clears throat> beta, um, frankly speaking, classic twinning is your previous, uh, when, when flash came in, they had this motion twinning. Motion twinning basically means that you want an object to move. Okay, motion twinning. Twinning uh, is, is any sort of action that you perform. So when, when Animate came in, the next version, they did not name it as motion twinning. They just said create classic twin. Okay, so for new users, yeah, you're right. They will not know what is meant by classic twinning. Classic twinning means motion twinning, when you want to create your motion. <clears throat> okay, all right. Uh, we are going to discuss shape twinning after this. We will discuss this today as well. Okay, uh, I was saying till now, any question? This lecture is being recorded. I will upload this. So, can I come to the next part? So, yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll come to file, I'll come to new. I will again select action scripting three and I'll press OK. So, um, let's do a shape twinning. Shape twinning is something very, very important. Uh, <clears throat> I, I can convert one shape to another shape. How will we do that? Uh, have a look at this. I have over here is a circle. Okay, one thing again, I always keep on saying that everything is important. Uh, if I simply <clears throat> make <clears throat> an oval shape, I will make an oval, not exact circle. What if I want to make an exact circle? If I press shift, I'll make exact circle. <clears throat> if I press shift, I'll make exact square. So I have to hold on with shift. And by holding down shift, I can make exact circle of any dimension that I may want to. That's the first rule. So I'll, I'll hold on shift and I'll make exact circle. And what I'll do is 
Um, yeah, let, let it be red. I'll bring it till 45 and I will say insert keyframe. Perfectly fine. But now what I'll do is I will right click over here and I will not do create classic twinning because our next topic of discussion is create shape twin. So I'll click on create shape twin, fine. And I'll do it here as well. So obviously, if I play it right now, if I play it right now, nothing is happening. Okay, nothing's happening. But what I'll do is I'll come to the last frame. I'll do it again if there's a problem, but remember, I'll come to the last frame. And I'll simply delete this one. Oh, dotted line means something is wrong. Obviously, I've deleted it. I'll change this to blue. I'll press shift and now I'll make a square. Okay, fine. Let me just leave it somewhere in the center. <clears throat> now, let's see what has happened. Control enter. We are moving from one shape to the other shape. So, this is the beginning of shape twinning. This is where your cartoon animation works and all that, whatever you want to do. It, it, obviously, you, you have to have a good um, aesthetic sense, not a pathetic sense. Only then you will be able to do something. But uh, like I told you, um, animate is not limited just to uh, these uh, cartoon animations, therefore advertisements, therefore um, scientific illustrations, whatever, wherever you need an animation, it could be there for. So, <clears throat> the good thing is if you just have to remember points. So, <clears throat> you might have seen something. I, I, have to, I have to use the magnifier. That I... My animation is going till the 45th frame, as you can see over here. Let's go down and see what's happening. So, I am right now, I've clicked on the 45th frame. I am working at 24 frames per second and I, my animation has ended in 1.8 seconds. That's an interesting thing. So this means uh, you should look at your timeline. For example, <clears throat> someone says, uh, you know what, you have to make us a small advertisement and this advertisement should last for five seconds. Then you have to be particular about that. What I'll do is I can even extend this. Let me extend this. Let me extend this till here. I'm exactly at two seconds. I've extended uh, four more. Now, after doing that, if you can't see, I have over here is exactly two seconds. Can you see that all of you? Right? This means I'm at 48 frames. And this is my frame rate and I'm at two seconds. This means what I can do is I can add a new layer. I have, after adding a new layer, I can come here, insert keyframe. Why, no, why do I have to insert keyframe here? Because I want now my next object to start its animation from here. If I directly add something to start from here. So I'll do insert keyframe. And obviously, I'm in the next frame. That's why it disappears. It's uh, layer one's properties are no longer at 49. I'll just type some text randomly. Let's, let's just type some text. Oh no. Okay, great. So just wait. Um, yeah. um, control A. Increase the size, go big properties. I would rather increase the size of this. It's 12. Let me make it round 25. Fine, uh, and all I'll do is I'll come till 85, insert keyframe, not classic twin, I'll just say create, uh, sorry, not shape twinning, classic twin. And what I'll do is I'll just simply click on this and we'll just increase the size of this. Using this scale tool over here, you can see free transform tool, I can increase the size. So now what's happening is, let me first show you from here. My first layer, my second layer. You should see what's happening. I come here, when this stops, my new new layer comes in, I insert a keyframe over here, and then this one starts. So if I press Control Enter, this is what I have. You get the point, all of you. Yes. Anyone has any yes. confusion, you can raise your hand, you can tell me, I can wait. But if I wait, 
<clears throat> the video is being recorded and it will become too heavy so i don't want to do that as well <clears throat> yes is it fine for today or should i continue with the next topic as well you tell me or you want to practice till here yeah yeah because it's the first class <clears throat> and the very first class i i don't i don't usually want to discuss so much so that 